Okay, so we just we're just gonna step down a notch here, and just and um we're just gonna touch up on the rules of scope here. So notice that I have a block of code within this int loop here, this int main function. We'll go over functions very shortly in the next couple tutorials. Well, anyway, we have this block of code here. Now we've seen these code blocks here. We are, I've been referring to these as a block of code here. Well, within it is scope here. Now, before I get into that, it's well within it we can see certain things here. If I make a, a variable, let's say I make a a variable here called a. Now, I want to use I want to be more creative. Let's call it pi, and it equals three point one four one five. And that's it. Okay. Now, if I output this here, you know, nothing. This this is very basic review. I can just print something to the screen. I could have shown you this in lesson one. But now, let's say I put this guy here in another block of code here. Now, since I introduced you to the for loop here, you might have had problems. Let's say I make a variable here inside a block of code. Well, there's going to be a problem here. It says, well, let's see what the error says. It says, scope visibility, scope visibility, error pi. Um, and it says, error pi, undeclared identifier. It's, this is basically saying that pi does not exist. We have not declared a, th a number, a variable called pi. Well, we did, but it was it's in a different scope here. If I got rid of these braces here, and then I run this here, there won't be a problem. It'll output my value for pi. However, if I decide to back up here and put those braces back, now we're going to have a problem with that. Well, that's not good. Well, let, let me make another variable. Let's make a double called E. So now right here, this, there's, there's two different scopes here. So first we have this main scope here, which is probably always going to be there, which will always be there here. And then we had a new scope of our own that we made. So we have this piece of, we have a scope here inside this scope here. Okay? So let me make another variable called a. Uh, let me just make another one called e here. I'm just arbitrarily picking e. Now let's say I want to output e, right? Well, that's not a problem, right? I mean, this is this is nothing new. We should output the variable e because they're within the same scope, right? So I mean, that's not new. But now, what if I tried to output this here? Okay, if I try to output here, well, they're not within the same scope, but they still, it'll still print this out to the screen here. Look, this is 2.718. But notice I put the C out statement inside this scope here. Well, that doesn't make any sense. How come I, how come that, um, I'm in a, I'm in a different scope here, right? So we have two levels of scope here. We got this main scope here, then we got this other scope here. It's kind of like a, almost like an onion here. They have these layers. But, um, so right here, I can print out E here, but um, notice that uh, it's printing out a variable that's in a different scope here. Well, look at that's because it's up a level here. But now, however, if I try to print out pi here, even though it's in a different scope as well, we won't be able to print that here. Well, let me show you how this works. Here, let me uh, change this to. Uh, That way we're consistent with these examples here. So notice that uh, in our example right now, <clears throat> I drew a diagram here. Now imagine this big blue octagon is um is the main scope here. We also have another one. This green one here is our un just this scope here. That's our green one. So this is like green here, and this whole thing is blue here. Notice that our uh, this scope here is inside this scope here. So that's just the uh, pic picture here. 
Now basically, all the functions, all the variables, like inside this scope here, I can see all the vari if, if I'm in this scope here, I can see all the variables. C++ will see all the variables that were outside that scope. So it can see E right here, and that's why I'm able to print. This is why I'm able to print E to the screen here. Because inside this green loop here, I can see the 2.718 here, which is this E value here. Well, if, I, if I'm outside the scope here and I try to print out pi, I cannot see the green here. So that's what this arrow represents. This arrow is pointing. This arrow says I can use anything that's within this blue here. And that's the rules of scope here. Let me make another one here as a different example. Hopefully this will start to make more sense if, it, if it's not making sense right now. Let's say I make another scope inside the scope here. Let's say I make another double. And I want to call it, um, I want, let's say it's an int. Here, let me just call it an int. A here, and it's equal to 7 here. Okay. Well, guess what here? Let me get rid of this here. So I have three different variables made in three different scopes here. Here, I'm probably going to want to copy these. Now, okay, let me paste these somewhere. Okay, so I have three different variables here. Well, now I have another one here. And uh, in this third one, this third scope here, I just made a, a variable A here. Well, A can see the pi, therefore it can see the green here. So A can see everything. So basically, inside here, I can still output. I can output E to the screen here. And it's all the way to the, the farthest scope here. And I can also output the pi here. Why? Because I look at the diagram here. I have three different scopes here. And the visual aid looks just like this. I have three different scopes embedded inside a scope here. Just like this here. So it's kind of, it looks kind of funny here. But here it is, you know, like A here. Imagine this is like a, a hill here. Remember, this is ground level here. And this is a building here. Well, um, if I'm at if I'm at ground level here, I can only see the variable e here. I'm not. I cannot use any math or any calculations or or print out anything here that involves these guys here. C plus plus will not see that because it's not within the rules of scope here. However, if I'm right here, let's say I'm at this green level here. If I try to output here right inside here, I'm at this green level here. <coughs> Let me delete this here. I can output E to the screen. I can also output pi. I cannot output the variable A. Watch what happens here. And I'm already getting a red squiggly here saying it's not going to exist. See that? So notice that the, uh, here, let me put the A over here. Notice that the A doesn't exist within the scope here. Because, looking at this diagram here, this is like another building on top of that building here. We can't see on, on top of that roof here, what's, whatever's on there. We can only see this right here, whatever's on this green layer here, and we can also see everything below that here. So imagine that this is stacked here. So that's the rules of scope here, and we can always see outside those here. We cannot look back into here. So we're, look, we're talking about scope visibility. Here, now let me just uh, <clears throat> give you one more example here of what else might might occur. And then uh, that'll just be our introduction of scope here. And that's going to be one of those things that aren't going to go away. You'll get used to it, hopefully. Hopefully it makes sense.
let's say there's a pi here. So pi is just, I'm just trying to put pi on this green thing here. And let me make another one here. Um, let's call it um, capital R. And um, so basically what this will look like here, inside this main function here, I'm going to make another scope. So I'm still on the main here. Let me uh, break this down here so we can see what's going on. Okay, so finally, we make another s scope visibility here, and uh, I'm going to make a, let's call it a boolean this time, just to use something different. So, now I'm at two different levels of scope here. Right here, if I'm with, if I'm, if it within this scope here, I can only print out R and E to the screen. I can only use the variables R and E. If I'm doing calculations inside here, since I'm inside here, since I'm doing my typing inside here, that means the X I'm inside here, I can only use these two variables here. I can use the E, I can use the R. So in this case here, whatever's in here, whatever's in this blue here, I can almost, so far we can always use E. Notice that in all our previous programs here, I had you make variables right at the very beginning. Or I have been making variables at the very beginning here. Just so we wouldn't run into this problem here. Now, it started to come up as we started using the for loop here. Because when we started using loops here, that it was basically making another scope. So anytime you make a set of braces, you're, you're creating a set of scope here. Inside the if statement, we don't usually make variables inside the if because... I mean, you can, but um, I don't know. I don't think I've been making variables inside the ifs on the, on these tutorials. But basically, here, if we're signed here, we can only use these two here. Now, notice here. Let's say I'm over here. I can only use the pi and the e here. So if I'm doing calculations, if I'm doing calculations over here. Like if I'm printing stuff for the screen like right here, or I got code executing that's going on inside here, it's only going to be able to use calculations from pi to e. It can only use everything in the blue and everything in the screen here. It can't see r. Notice that I cannot use the variable r here. So if I, uh, and same thing here, let me, uh, let me try to output, um, let me try to use the variable pi from here. I, I, it wouldn't make sense for me to try to use R here because R doesn't exist yet anyway. But let me just try to output pi here since I did declare it at some point. And notice it's going to have a problem, right? Because if I'm in this loop over here, I can't see what's over here on pi. Because they're, they're in two different scopes here. I can only see everything below it. I can't see things that are at the same level. Okay, so, so you might be uh, asking yourself, um, why would I ever make variables inside a scope here? I, I might as well just write, I mean, it seems like it would make more sense just to make all my variables global. Not global, but inside the main. We'll talk about global variables later, because that, that way I can use them all all the time, whenever I want, whenever I need to. So and you can do that, right? Regardless of what scope you're in, you can you would always have access to all these variables here because they're at the main level and then you won't be able to go outside that main loop. Well I mean that that that's logical. That I'd have the same question too. Why would I ever want to do that? Well sometimes things happen. When you make the for loop here, you know, you have to have one variable inside a, a loop. And it's only gonna be used inside that loop. Now most of the time good programming practice is to keep your variables as local as possible. It's going to be considered a bad programming practice to use um, global variables and or like more global variables than it is local variables here. So that's um so that's just the uh, 
that's just an introduction to the uh, global scope here. And uh, we'll go over a little bit more in the next tutorial.